All right, so um, moving on now, the first thing I want you to do before we make any changes is toggle the run it feature off or false, toggle it to false, so that it's not trying to process every time we make a change. That's just going to slow you guys down too much, and these computers are not that good. So um, let's make a few changes. Um, the first thing that I want to do is uh, kind of limit the study a little bit. So I, I, I'm going to ask you to analyze a couple of different conditions. So I'm going to ask you to analyze uh, the equinoxes and the solstices. So the dates, and you should write this down, the dates for each of these are December 22nd, or I guess I should start with the first one of the year. So March 21st, June 22nd, and September 23rd. So I'll write it up here. Is that for this year? Uh, I don't know. I just looked it up online. <coughs> yeah, sweet. I mean, it's between the 21st and 22nd. Are they always on the same day? I don't even know. They're yeah, they're not. Uh, I, always uh, yeah, yeah. I think they're all around yeah, one second. Oh, you're the three? Yeah. 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 So you're going to trust his work for it? Yeah. All right, so the dates are on the board. It's March 21st, June 22nd, September 23rd, and December 22nd. And the time is 1 p.m. 1 p.m. for each. Is that closer to solar noon, right? Yeah, closer. For all of them? Huh? They're all 1 p.m.? Yeah, we're going to do 1 p.m. for all of them. <clears throat> Why? Well, he'll have he'll probably have different requirements. I'm just simplifying this for processing. Okay, but my objective here is for you to just be able to isolate certain days, and then you can figure out the rest from there. All right. So um, what we've got is a couple of different inputs that we need to modify. Okay. So we we. The way I intend to do this is through using panels rather than individual inputs. And so with the panels, I'm basically just going to uh, list out the, the various inputs and create indexes for them. So it's going to look like this. Um, if I drop a panel in, um, when we're trying to isolate well, we've, we've got a couple of things. We have the month, we have the day, and we have the time, right? So the hour. The hour is obviously going to be 13. And that's not going to change for any of them. So I can leave that panel as is. I'm just going to set it here. I'm not going to change anything yet. And then I drop in another panel. Actually, one of the cool things you can do with this is title it. So you should probably do that. It might be helpful. So I'm going to call this one hour. And then it'll show up like that instead. Oh, it's fancy text. Yeah, fancy text. So the next one then is, uh, I'm going to just make that one the days, I suppose. So this one I want to be read as a list. So if I right click it and I toggle off multi-line data, it does this. It looks like this, right? So it, it starts off with this number zero on the left, and then it has text. So the, the thing that I want to just take a quick moment to communicate to you is that lists in Grasshopper are read like a list in programming languages. Programming languages start with zero. Don't ask me why I'm not a programmer. Eventually I'll find out, but it starts at zero. So the first day that we have is the 21st, and then hit enter, and then the next day is the 22nd, and then the next day is the 23rd, and the next day after that is the 22nd again. 
Now, why do I have to put the 22nd twice? Right, there are two different times, right? So the reason I'm having these go in as a list is because they have to read and associate the, the list of the month with the list of the day. Make sense? Well, you'll see kind of how that relates here in just a second. So you can copy and paste that over. And now we're going to do the month. So if the first month is March, our first number is going to be 3. And then June is 6. September is 9. And December is 12. So these are our two lists. Um, why I'm, I'm, this is a guess here, right? So I'm making an inference based off of what I know here. So what I know is that in one input we were given, uh, we provided or it provided a series of 24 numbers, but in the other inputs, it only provided one. So I'm guessing that what's going to happen with the 13, when I plug that into hours, is that it's going to read all the other numbers, the length of the list, right? So four items, and it's going to repeat 13 four times to match, just like it's doing with these two numbers to match the 24 instances of hours that we gave it. Okay, so I just made an inference, and let's try it out and see how it works. So we can delete these, uh, the existing inputs like that. And for me, I'm going to give myself a little more room here and slide that over. So now hours, we plug that obviously into hours. <clears throat> and then the days, we can plug that in here. And then months, we'll plug that in there. So I think that that's going to work, and let's do a test here and run it and see how it works. There it goes. So now what it's done here is it's limited the study to just those times, right? So it's saying uh, in that range, the at 1 p.m., on the equinoxes and solstices, that is the, the, shade, the shade layout or range, shadow range across the site. Is that making sense? No, no, it's no. So what this is showing is at 1 p.m. on four separate days, the the equinoxes, the two equinoxes, and the two solstices. Okay, so uh, what do we do with this, right? The the next step for us is really, and I'm I'm now providing to you what your assignment is going to be. So we're going to have to produce a uh, shade and shadow study for our building at the solstices and the equinoxes uh, at 1 p.m. So I'm going to ask you to just do this on your building. And then uh, the other thing that I'm going to ask for is for you to provide a section of the building that shows the angle of sunlight and how far it reaches into the space. Okay, so it's a really simple exercise. Um, and we'll do it on this, but I just want to um, quickly clarify how do you get that information, right? So we, are, we already know that now, if you look at this here, right, it has a bake it component, so, and it is a mesh. If you look over here, we have context mesh, analysis mesh, right? So this is, now from this point, it's exactly the same export process that you went through for your weather data, right? It's a mesh, so we have to, we have to bake it out in hatches, not a mesh, hatches. Uh, and then we export it into Illustrator or, you know, however, however you want to process it. But the uh, sun angle is a different story, right? 
right now it's just a graphic. I can't tell right now exactly how high the sun is when it's casting this shadow, can I? Unless I know exactly how tall the building is, and even then it's still iffy because this is all pixelated. So what we can do is um, get the information from the sun path output. And I mentioned that panels are going to be your best friend here. Really all you have to do is grab a panel and take this sun altitudes output and plug it in. Whoa. Uh, it's given us extra information. All right, so it looks like it's given us too much information. So let's see if we can identify why. Four values, four values. One value. Hmm. I might need to try a few things out to figure this out. All right, let me try and figure something out because what it's doing is it's blending this information and it's running it a bunch of times. So I'll figure it out. <laughs> 